Okay, so what we're going to talk about here is how do I find a trigonometric function of uh, the addition of two inverse trig functions? So this all, or, or the subtraction, sorry, not an addition one here, we're doing a subtraction. Uh, so this really all comes back to the idea of um, I, I'm subtracting two amounts. So th the formula that we have for sine deals with if I had something like sine, okay, of a minus b, and that formula comes out to be that you have the sine of a, the cos times the cosine of b, uh, minus, okay, so it's minus in this case, minus the cosine of a times the sine of b. So what we have here is we've got a uh, uh, a trig function here with a subtraction inside. And this is the formula that we have to use. Well, some people might say here, well, I've got tangent, I've got cosine, and I need to take a look at it. Well, what I need to take a look at is that this whole value right here, okay, is what A is. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that, well, A is equivalent to the tangent inverse of 3 halves, okay? And I'm going to go over here and say, well, this is what B is. So I'm going to say that B is equivalent to uh, the cosine inverse of 3 fifths. So what I now have is that I can now begin to say that, well, okay, applying the inverse property here, that if I took the tangent of this side and the tangent of this side, what I would be left with is the tangent of A is equivalent to 3 halves. And I can say that the cosine of B is equivalent to 3 fifths. So, Although I have tangent here, um, that's okay. You know, that's not a big deal. Uh, even though that this formula up here has the sine of a, cosine of b, um, because what I can do here is based off of uh, trigonometry, which is basically the geometry of triangles, is what we're kind of dealing with, and all the ratios and how they're created, um, and dealing with circular and how circles, you know, if you drop perpendiculars down the x-axis and use your radius, you've got a triangle. Uh, so we are basically connecting those two. So this goes back to the idea of, you know, the trigonometric ratio based off of the circle, uh, which was the uh, y, uh, the ratio of your y coordinate divided by your x coordinate. So what I've got here now is that I've got in this case the, uh, well, I, sorry, not your coordinates, but your ratio of 3 divided by 2, so that is y, and this is x. So what I can find here is Sine is the relationship of y over r, cosine is the relationship of x over r. So knowing that I have y and x, I can use my formula of r squared. So r squared equals uh, 3 squared plus 2 squared. And what I've come up with here is that this is 9 and this is 4, so 9 and 4 makes 13. So I'm left with r squared equals 13. So I take now the square root, and I get left with r equals the square root of 13. Now, whenever you take a root of a real number, it should always be plus or minus. But in this case, plus or minus doesn't matter because it's a radius, and a radius is a measurement. And the measurement, in this case, is a distance, which must always remain positive. So what I'm left with here is r equals uh, square root of 13. And then I come over to here, and I'm going to deal with the uh, cosine now, which is the x over the r. So what I'm going to do here is that this is a b. So uh, what I've got here is r for a, and I'm going to find the uh, y for the b. So what I get left with is 25 equals 3 squared, which is 9. Okay, And I got 25 by squaring 5, which is r, uh, plus y. So I subtract 9, and I get 16 sorry for the squared, is y squared, so I get y is equivalent to 4. So, what I'm now left with in this case, okay, is the fact that I've now got y is r uh, for b. So, I can go ahead and use all my trigonometric ratios. I have x, r, and y. So, if I wanted to find the sine of b, okay, the sine of b is equivalent to uh, y over r, so 4 over 5. Now over here, it's a little bit more work because i got to find two of them, but it's just plugging them in. So now what I'm left with is that the cosine of A okay, is x over r. We found r is root 13 and x is 2. So 2 divided by root 13, I multiply bottom to 
complete the uh, root. So I get 2 root 13 divided by 13. Uh, and the sine is done very similar, so the sine of A is equivalent to 3 divided by root 13, which is going to simplify to being 3 root 13 divided by 13. And the way I come up with that is I'll just show you a quick little example so that you can understand how I came up with that. But originally this was 2 root 13, okay, and you can't leave this as a over a radical, so you multiply top and bottom by root 13 times by root 13, and what the bottom is, a root 13 times root 13 is 13, and 2 times 13, root 13 is 2 times root 13. So that's principles that I apply there. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take all of this information, and I'm going to plug it just into this formula and see what I get. So here we go. I'm going to erase some things. So I'm going to erase my work here, I'm going to erase my work here. Uh, I'm going to erase this so that I can plug this information. So here we go. So if I take a look at my cosine of A. Cosine of A is 2 root 13 of 13. So this is kind of like if I was saying x equals, and you're in algebra 1, you would just, wherever you saw an x, you plug it in. So whenever I see a cosine of A, I'm plugging in this entire value. So cosine of A, I see right here, so it's a minus 2 root 13 divided by 13. And I'm going to put that in parentheses because I'm substituting, so you always substitute in. So sine of b, I'm going to plug in as 4 fifths. And then over here for the sine of a, sine of a, wherever I see it, is 3 root 13 divided by, so in this case, 13. And I'm going to multiply that by cosine of b, and cosine of b here is 3 fifths, so I'm going to plug that in. So now that I have all my information plugged in, I'm just going to go ahead and simplify. So let me erase this stuff now that it's plugged in. So here we go. So... 3 root 13 times 3 is 9 root 13. So this becomes 9 root 13 all over, well, 5 times 13 is 65, minus, so in this case I get 8 root 13 all over 65. So now I have uh, like denominators that I'm going to simplify the numerators. So 9 root 13 minus 8 root 13. Well, I can do this because these roots are the same, so therefore I can subtract basically their coefficients of the root, which is a 9 and 8. So 9 minus 8 is 1, so I'm left with root 13 divided by 65. And that would be my final answer for this particular problem that says, uh, what is the sine of the inverse tangent of uh, 3 halves, which inverse tangent is the arc tangent, what I'm really taking, minus the arc cosine of three-fifths. So I hope that helps with these types of problems, and yeah, have a good one.